How's it going, guys? Past level question on Nikun Step 1 Internal Medicine 2 CK. 50 year old woman, she has her parathyroid hormone and calcium measured, and we have this graph here depicting it. What's the most likely diagnosis? Let's just hop through. Choice A, hypomagnesemia, wrong fucking answer. This would give you the dot, and this is very difficult actually. And I was tempted to make this question based on it, but we'll just. Let's just run with it, okay? So the dot would actually be in the bottom left here where your calcium and parathyroid hormone are both low. Now, this is seen classically in alcoholics where they fill up on alcohol. So they have very, very various nutrient vitamin deficiencies, okay? Folate, thiamine, magnesium. Magnesium causes low calcium and low potassium, non-responsive to supplementation. So you need basal level magnesium for PTH secretion. So PTH would be low in the setting of hypomagnesemia, and you also have low calcium, okay? And then you need magnesium for the prevention of uh, wasting of potassium in the kidney, okay? So it helps the kidney retain potassium. So if you don't have magnesium, you, you get kaleuresis, okay? So wasting potassium. But uh, what they'll do is give you an alcoholic who normal calcium is 8.4 to 10.2 milliequivalents per liter. They'll give you calcium, let's say, of 7.8, and they'll say, following administration of calcium, uh, the levels are rechecked and they're at 7.9, uh, which the following is the most appropriate next best step of management, 2CK question, the answer is check serum magnesium, okay, for step one can just be hypomagnesemia. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, osteoporosis, wrong fucking answer, so the dot's going to be in the normal box. If you're first learning it, okay, it's like, OMG, holy shit, really? Yes, not hard, okay? That's also past level. So you need to know that serum calcium, serum phosphate, PTH, all the labs are normal in osteoporosis. Old granny, fractures are hip, you check your labs, they're all normal. That's actually, that can, that can blow the window open for a tangential discussion right now, okay? As far as if you do get an acute uh, fracture of a bone, then serum ALP can transiently increase, okay? Release from the bone. Uh, but that's more of a... Uh, a nitpicky talking point. I'm saying in general, if you just take a patient who has osteopenia, osteoporosis, and you check her labs, she's going to have normal lab values. That would be in the normal box here. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, Paget disease, wrong fucking answer. So you're going to have normal calcium and you'd have normal PTH. Uh, that would also be in the normal box. You need to know that you have an isolated increase in ALP and Paget disease. Okay, very important. If you ask students, well, what's the derangement in Pagets? They're going to say something about the calcium usually. It's fucking wrong. Okay, so I've made prior questions on this on the YouTube, but you're going to choose normal calcium, normal PTH, you choose an isolated increase in ALP if they had it on the y-axis here. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, renal insufficiency. Wrong fucking answer. Calcium's low in renal failure. Okay, so... Two reasons. One, you can't reabsorb it the way you're supposed to in the late DCT under the action of PTH. Second reason is you can't get the 1-alpha-hydroxylase activation as you're supposed to via PTH in the PCT of the kidney. So decrease 125-D3, decrease small bowel absorption of calcium. So those are the two reasons you get hypocalcemia in renal failure. And that low calcium is going to cause PTH secretion to go up to compensate because you have decreased negative feedback, the calcium sensing receptors, the parathyroid glands. So that's called secondary hyperparathyroidism, where the dot would be low calcium, high PTH. Choice D, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, sarcoidosis, correct answer. Okay, so not dramatic. It's sure, maybe a tiny bit older. I mean, you get 30s, 40s, African-American woman who's going to have idiopathic autoimmunity characterized by non-caseating granulomas in various organs, but especially the lungs. And they are composed of activated macrophages called histiocytes that secrete 1-alpha-hydroxylase, which is going to activate your vitamin D, cause hypervitaminosis D, thereby causing increased small bowel absorption of calcium. So you get hypercalcemia with sarcoidosis, ultra-high yield, ultra-pass level, and then you're going to suppress your PTH as a result of increased negative feedback at the parathyroid glands. Now, another important answer for the same location is metastatic malignancy. Okay, so I've made questions on this as well, as well where I could have just written breast cancer is the answer, and or melanoma. Okay, so any cancer 
uh, that is going to metastasize to bone, you're going to get lysis uh, slash leaching of the calcium out of the bone. Even in tangential, even in prostate cancer, you get blastic mets, you still get hypercalcemia. Uh, but you need to know malignancy is an important cause of calcium leaching out of the bone, and in turn, that would suppress your PTH. Correct answer. You know the deal. Once you make more content, I feel like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.